Hello everyone, today we are still discussing the world to come, the Olam, and the eighth day, the Shema, the Shema at Soretz, the eighth day, proceeding after uh, Sukkot or Feast of Tabernacles. And it's it's a, the Feast of Tabernacle is seven days, and then you go into the eighth day. The Feast of Tabernacle is all about the ingathering, it's all about the feast of our joy. It's about coming in and tabernacling. Uh, it's the gathering where you where we're going to be gathered together in Messiah. We are, you know, he's going to tabernacle with us. And I believe prophecy and scripture is it's fulfilled and it's continuing to be fulfilled. I believe you should fulfilled everything in part i think i believe he fulfilled all the moedim seven feast days but they are also playing out in our in real life in real time and i believe he fulfilled passover unleavened bread uh, first fruits pentecost was fulfilled at the day of pentecost in acts and I believe that this in gathering and the feet also during the time of his crucifixion, he, uh, I, and I explained that in my book, the spirit of Elijah, how he also feel Passover. He was the Passover lamb. Also, he also went outside the camp and he was uh, crucified outside the camp. And this signifies that he also took care of the day of atonement. And then we are at the in gathering and he came and he tabernacled with us when he came, you know, he was amongst us. He was Emmanuel, Emmanuel, God with us. So we, they, they behold him, but there is a collection of people or a, a people that are being going to be caught up with him in the air and he's going to gather them. But I believe he is also gathering people by faith into this messianic age in this messianic kingdom because the seven has to do with his kingdom of peace and we obtain the kingdom by faith and and he so he is gathering his people yes there will be a literal gathering where at the end where we will be raised up and will forever be with the Lord, and he will gather his elect from the four corners of the earth. But he is also, but this is going to be played out and fulfilled uh, physically, but spiritually, we are all coming into Messiah. He is the pathway to the Father. He's gathering uh, Jew and Gentiles alike into the faith of his kingdom. So in, in my thoughts, uh, when he fulfilled Passover during the time of, you know, the exodus of Egypt and he fulfilled, you know, them coming out of Egypt and this, and they went in and they ate of the Passover lamb and the death angel passed by, uh, passed over them and they, and they went to the Red Sea and God baptized them or brought them across the, uh, over the, uh, on dry ground. These are showing pictures of the deliverance they they left in haste. They wasn't that bread wasn't able to rise. So the it's a bread of affliction. It's a bread of haste. So this unleavened bread. So all these things were being played out without their knowledge. God was fulfilling these things because He was going to bring them to Mount Sinai to make a covenant and consummate that marriage. And He was doing this in part to for the Pentecost to give them the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But I like it, I mentioned last time, they did not fulfill this consummation of marriage. They were under a tutor, God put them under a tutor because they failed to uh, be faithful to the God of Israel. So God had to put them under a tutor, tutor and they were under a mediation. So they could not come into this full impact of the Spirit abiding in them and coming into Christ. So anyways, this is why the, uh, the, so these are all these things are being fulfilled 
I believe without our even without our knowledge. They're not there, uh, and so now a lot of people don't uh, believe that the uh, the last three fe feasts, the feast of trumpets, the feast of the uh, Day of Atonement and the Feast of Tabernacle is something that is being done in the future. Well, I believe Yeshua fulfilled them because he is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He came in, a, uh, uh, I believe he was born during the time of Feast of Trumpets. And I believe he did fulfill the atonement because we are atoned now. He has made an atonement, a propitiation on our behalf. Mm -hmm. So he, by his blood and through his sacrifice, so he fulfilled all the sacrificial things. And I know there's scripture talking about the day of the Lord. And there's a day of wrath and a day of recompense that has not yet been fulfilled. And they constitute the day of the day of the Lord with the day of atonement. But I believe the day of atonement is just what it says. It's a day that Yeshua, Yeshua fulfilled the, the, the atoning sacrifice outside the camp because the Bible says that he went outside the camp in Hebrews and he offered up the sacrifice. And that outside the camp is the uh, sin offering, the bull, the red heifer sacrifice, the things that the sin offerings that had to do with death. So, and Yeshua conquered death when he died. Now, death is the last enemy to be destroyed, but he conquered it. It has no dominion over a believer's life. But it still reigns. It still, sin and death still reigns until, until it's all been uh, fulfilled at the end of his, when he comes back. When he comes back, he will swallow up uh, death and and he will and death will have no more sting and it will be swallowed up in victory. So we see that a lot of the things that were uh, that Yeshua did did in part, but there is a full complete restoration and a full complete uh, a fulfillment of all of the feast days. All prophecy is going to be fulfilled, just because we're not having the understanding or we don't see it in real time doesn't mean that he has not fulfilled all things all things are, have been fulfilled they have to be fulfilled because we are we are been made complete in him if there's anything that is still not uh it, you know been resolved then we we're, then our sins are not been forgiven where we can't claim this completeness he hasn't fulfilled all things and we and he can't sit down by the father's right hand if he is if he has not completed all things the bible says he sits on the right hand of the father and he and he said at the cross it is finished all things that is needing to be done has already been accomplished in him so he is able to sit down in, next to the Father and rest. We now we are in His rest in this messianic age, in this messianic age of peace. Now, on the peripheral, it doesn't look like it's very peaceful, does it? It doesn't look. We still have wars. We still have sin. We still have death. We still have uh, rumors of wars. We still have earthquakes we still have pestilence we still have we still have all these tragedies in life because death still reigns it has not been swallowed up yet in victory but this is why god is separating the wheats and the tares the sheeps and the goats he has completed all things that are going to be completed now we obtain our inheritance by faith and it's not, uh, the, it's not it's something that we have to wait on. It's not something that we have to uh, w uh, wait to for him to fulfill. We gather in Christ. Now, he is gathering the uh, harvest, the grape harvest, as we speak, the, f the fruits of the earth. But we're, we're doing it by faith, and we're not doing it by sight. 
And so this is why people are confused because I believe the Passover and Shavuot has been fulfilled in its completion. And I believe the other three feasts are been are fulfilled in part, but there's going to be a culmination of things. There's going to be a, a, a reality of it all. But we are being gathered in Christ. So it, we're, we are living in this messianic age of peace because Yeshua's kingdom is a kingdom of, of peace. And he reconciles all things through peace. He's the administrator of of peace and we get it confused because we're not seeing it on the peripheral but a believer has to come into this peace come into the rest of god and we to obtain the kingdom of peace through faith and i'm going to read in this book i did a a, a on the kingdom of peace because it is through his blood that he reconciles uh, us with the Father. He takes the wrath of God away from us, and we now can live in the peace of God. Because God is dealing with eternal things. He's not dealing with natural things. He's dealing with a, a kingdom that cannot be seen, a kingdom without observation, a kingdom within. So if we're if and so we're so if he if he if we're dealing with a kingdom that cannot be be that we can't behold from our eyes, but we we know that it exists, we have to be compliant <laughs> to that understanding. <laughs> so it says, let me look. Um, so we are we are in this age. Let's see. We're let me look at here. The Covenant of Peace. Okay, chapter eight. And so we, so we are looking for the kingdom that will one day reveal itself. It will manifest itself, but but it doesn't mean that it's not in existence. That he doesn't reign. He, the Bible says that all power has been given unto him in heaven and earth. So he reigns. Uh, even if if we understand it or not, right? All he's been he's been made head over all principalities and powers and all rulers, and so he he reigns. He just has not came to claim the earth as and the and the people of the earth as his own yet. Uh, you know, I, I I'm not I I'm not under the uh, impression that the millennial reign. A lot of people believe that the millennial reign and the messianic kingdom are one and the same. I don't believe that because I believe he reigns now in the unseen, and he administrates the kingdom of peace from the unseen world, and we will step into the eighth day. So the the millennial reign. Uh, we will. The Bible says we will reign with him a thousand years. We are reigning. The Bible says that we are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. So we are reigning with him, and all powers and principalities and are subject under our feet when we exercise the kingdom of peace or the kingdom, the ki the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. So we we reign with him. But we're not automatically in this position of reigning until we are able to understand that God is dealing with us from the inside out, not the outside in. And we will, we, we will exercise this authority, we'll exercise this power when we have, we ourselves has been transformed and renewed by the renewing of our mind and we have been changed and we understand that he reigns and he is lord of all now now the temporal world is never going to submit to him fully so he's going to come back and make war with uh with the inhabitants of the earth but god is not God is not going to, uh, Yeshua is not coming back to set up a kingdom 
like most preachers are, you know, are, you know, are, you know, saying that, you know, all the nations will run to it. You know, uh, Jerusalem will be set above in the heights of the hills and, and all that stuff. These things that are happening that are going, are, are happening now, the Gentiles are coming under that kingship. They are coming under that rule. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. the, uh, they're running to them. And Jerusalem is uh, from above. The Bible says we are children from above, not from the Jerusalem of beneath. So, see, be just because we, we don't quite have all the fulfillment of all, everything in prophecy, and literally, possibly, the, you know, the new Jerusalem is coming down. The new Jerusalem is, you know, uh, and he's going to reign that what people believe is that there's going to both be, but there's going to be death and sin and death still reigning simultaneously with Yeshua. But, and that's not true. You, should, you, can't, you can't have this realm uh, that is being handed over to Satan and death has entered into this cosmos. Death reigns. Death has to be defeated. If death is defeated, if sin is defeated, then they have no power. Do you see what I mean? Mm -hmm. So the inhabitants of the earth have to be transformed. They have to be, they've, they've already had to come into the knowledge of Christ. Wow. They have to come into the submission of his lordship they have to be already been changed into immortality does that make sense they can't be mortal they can't have rain they can't have sin and death reigning in them mm -hmm. yeshua reigns in the heavens with a rod of iron now but that iron it has to do with the celestial realm his his warfare is not with flesh and blood his warfare is not, it's with the kingdom of darkness. You're just on one side or the other. Do you see? You're either going to be submitted to Yeshua as his king, or you're going to be submitted to Satan and his kingdom. So, but when Yeshua comes back, he's taking, bringing eternity with him. Mm -hmm. and, and Jerusalem is coming down. And all those who are in the earth have already been changed. To, to be able to be co, uh, uh, conducive to the realm of the eternal. It's not about the millennial reign. It's not about the, uh, you know, a, a thousand year reign. It's about, a thou, about, it's about reigning with him now in the heavens and now letting him to uh, uh, fulfill, uh, fulfill all prophecy I do believe there's going to be an Anna Messiah. I do believe there's going to be wars. I do believe there's going to be a lot of things that are going to transpire. And there's going to be a lot of deception. So I don't believe, I believe there's going to be an abomination of desolation. I do believe in all these things. Because a lot of prejudice believe that, you know, that the millennial reign is now. But they believe these things, these events have already been, been already fulfilled and already done. And I believe... You, to believe that these things have already been taken place, they have been taken place in part, but they have not been fulfilled. They have not been completed. Just like Yeshua has not completed everything in its full capacity. It's, they're still to be fulfilled. He fulfilled them and they're still to be fulfilled. That's the realm of the eternal. That's the realm of that uh that a lot of people can't understand mm -hmm. they can't understand how he can complete and fulfill one thing just because he fulfilled it once oh well let's just check that off no he continually fulfills things right. he can continually makes things happen he can continually shows himself as as king and lord over all the earth he's just had but he is allowing this uh, dividing of souls. You're either going to be on the Lord's side or on Satan's side. He's, he's, he's allowing the things of the earth be able to uh, for, uh, you know, form up 
your spiritual life. Are you going to serve God or are you going to serve Satan? This is this womb is is the gestation place uh, to create sons of God. And those who do not are not coming into the sonship of Yeshua, coming under him and being a son of God, being the, you, the Bible says he has given us power to become sons of God. If we're not going through the process of being sons of God, we're going to be, uh, we're, we're, we're going to be extracted, but the other people that are left are going to be the afterbirth because the earth is a womb and the earth is creating and forging sons of God. But, but those who do not, you know, does not, you know, get that power within them to become sons of God, they are going to be left here deceived and they're going to go through the judgments of, of Messiah. But it doesn't mean he's not reigning and that he doesn't live uh, to, you know, in the heavens and he's not, and he's not, and we're not living a, a part of this kingdom. We are part of the kingdom. Now we are living in the kingdom we 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 are abiding in the kingdom does that make sense mm -hmm. so let me see kind of got off track today but the the because the met the the uh millennium is they're just numbers they're just they're if you take them back to the original they're just they they have to do with affinity they have to do with with um, the, uh, the not necessarily have to be a literal thousand years. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So we really have to learn to be able to understand our scriptures and be able to, to understand that not everything that we see on the peripheral is, uh, okay, it says right here, it says the mortal body, Okay, I'm going to start, uh, it says 1 Corinthians 2, uh, 2 uh, 6, 2, and 3. Do ye not know that, that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertaineth to this life? Enoch was trained by God. To be set over the angels as a judge over principalities and powers of the air, the second heaven. The position of Messiah, prince, rules over the angelical host by ranking order. Enoch, who is from Adam's lineage, was elevated by God to an overseer in God's house. God replaced the anointed cherub that covered, who fell from the position as Messiah, or Mashiach, Ezekiel twenty-eight fourteen. That position is held by all the saints who are in Christ, who will reign with Yeshua in the heavenly places above principalities and powers in the second heaven. The mortal body will return to dust, but the eternal soul and spirit should dominate in a believer as the soul and spirit are being transformed from corruption to incorruption. The mystery at the end of the age, Simchat Torah, is when the believers are changed from mortality to immortality. 1 Corinthians 15, 53, and 54. This is a schedule to happen to believers when Yeshua's kingdom is revealed at his second coming. At the close of the seventh age, the first resurrection. Revelations 20 and 6. Blessed and holy is that hath part in the first re resurrection on such the second death, hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Strong's Concordance. I have a, I have a, um, oh, let me get this out. A cough drop in my own song. It said, in Strong's Concordance, thousand is ch chilo, plural, of uncertain affinity, a thousand. 
Thousand is the multiplier of ten. In Hebrew thought, ten is eshar or eshar, which means divide order, complete cycle, measure or group or congregation, whether for good or evil, blessing or judgment. Thus, ten represents a complete congregation, holy or kingdom. The thousand year reign is not within the time continuum of the of this age but not necessarily a literal thousand year of a millennial reign of christ on the earth yeshua reigns now in the heavens but will be revealed in the last days on the eighth day in hebrew thought the number eight symbolized affinity the eight is past the complete work of seven and moves us into the realm of the supernatural or the world to come. The new heaven and earth will be made a new after death is swallowed up in victory. The temporal existence of this present evil age will be done away with as eternity is unveiled. Second Timothy 1, 8 through 10. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord nor of me a prisoner, but be thou partakers of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God, who has saved us and has called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to our own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began, mm -hmm. but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Lord Jesus, Savior Jesus Christ, who has abolished death, and has brought life and immortality, light, immortality to light through the gospel. Romans 2 and 7. To them who by patience continuous in well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality and eternal life. The transference into eternal realm is the transference to the eternal kingdom of Yeshua by regeneration and by being systematically renewed by the Holy Spirit. We believers will be caught up in Yeshua, Jesus, at the return by shedding off more to our mortal bodies, which is temporal to allow our immortal souls and spirit to surface in, to surface in an instant. We believers should be allowing our spirit connected to Christ to lead us and be caught up with him now because sin and death have no more dominion over those who of us who abide in the spirit at the time of Messiah's return the spirit within man will have full dominance and have no more flesh to contend with the believer is being trained up now to walk in the spirit full of the Holy Spirit and put death the deeds of the body for the for this per peculiar event galatians 5 16 5 25 romans 8 1 and 4 the believer soul and spirit that are yielded to the holy spirit will consume the body with the fire of the holy presence of god god is a consuming fire and will be immediately translated at the sound of the archangel and the trump of god believers are admonished to seek for eternal life, which has been given us from the beginning of creation. The believer loses temporal life on earth to gain eternal life in Christ. But many choose to do their own will and seek worldly pleasure, sin, at the expense of eternal life. Man will choose either losing one life on the cross, through our, you know, we personally put our, uh, this temporal life and our temporal needs, wants, and desires on the cross. We we uh, we don't come to the cross and kneel at the cross and look up on the cross. No, we are to be partakers of the cross, yes. to be be conformable to His death. And so, man will choose either losing one life on the cross to gain another life eternal, or choose to live now in the realm of the death to gain eternal death. For whosoever will, 
save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. Mm -hmm. Titus 3 and 5, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but, uh, but according to his mercy, he saves us by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Spirit. Enoch was such a man that, we, that he was translated into immortality because he walked with God who consumed him. The body of death was purged. He interacted with God through the spirit man expressed through his soul and his soul became renewed and regenerated. The resurrection power. Genesis 5, and 24. And Enoch walked with God after he begat Melchizedek. Mel Mel um, Mel what is that? Meth uh -huh. Methuselah. Uh, Methuselah. Yeah, I can't even say it. 300. Look, it says three. The We've been talking about the word, uh, the letter, the number three. I'm sorry. Yes. The, and, it's, and the uh, word for it is shalos, which means resurrection power. So... 300 years and begot sons and daughters and all the days of Enoch were 365 and Enoch walked with God and he was not for God took him. Uh -huh. Enoch walked with God which can also meant that Enoch walked towards God. Right. God did not stay. Enoch did not stay on the earthly plane. That means in his heart. He desired to he desired the things of the Lord and his pursuit in life was to please him. And there was a close relationship. You know, God walked with uh, Adam and Eve in the cool of the day. And so this this gap of separation got bigger and bigger through generations, through time. But Enoch walked with God. He had this close contact. Even there was a separation, a breach between the eternal realm and the spirit realm. God still was dealing with them mm -hmm. and was and, and, and drawing them to him by faith. By faith, you are, you are lifted up out of here. And God will connect with that faith and, 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 and come into this realm. Mm -hmm. Through the spirit, through the the realm of faith, because it transcends you. See, we go up. He never. He we when they came, when the when heaven came down on Mount Sinai, it actually did not like come down. We go up, and he connects that the two places connect by faith. So when we go up, we go up to his realm. We get connected to his life. We are moving up. That's why the mountains are going to be raised up. And, you know, every valley is going to be raised up. Every mountain is going to be made low because there's going to be one evil plane because he is lifted up. Mm -hmm. so, you know, we go up to him. This the, the existence that we see here on the earth and the formation of and the peaks and the mountains and the high places are all going to be made low. Because we, because we, because everything is going to be brought to into its proper place and position, and he's going to be lifted up. Do you see what I mean? And we run into that, but it's it within the spirit realm. It is not in this geographical uh, cosmology that we see today. We we are going to be lifted up out of here through the eternal parts of us. The spirit and the body, you know, and everything is going to be a, a one even plane mm -hmm. because it's not going to, because it doesn't exist in the realm of God. It doesn't exist. He rules and reigns out of Jerusalem now with a rod of iron. That is where his throne is. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And it's, it's brought bringing back this eternal existence. That got separated in the beginning. <laughs> Adam and Eve walked with him in the cool of the day. It wasn't. Uh, it was one eternal house of God. It wasn't two, one temporal, one eternal. It was one eternal house of God that they abide in. The mm -hmm. separation came when sin, when in their disobedience, sin came in. That separated. Sin will separate you from God. 
So th th that's why we we are not experiencing th this this heavenly realm because there has been there has been a breach there has been a the, a, a a divide and and it is closer than what you think. The Bible says the earth is his footstools, the heavens is his throne. It's pretty close. It's yeah. not and, and, and what we see. Because we don't, we think he's so distant, but it's just a veil away. That's why when Yeshua died on the cross and the veil was rent from top to bottom, was indicating it's just that it, it's just a veil that separates us from the eternal existence. And really, it is closer than what we think. But everything, all the uh, the all these structures are going to are going to. Uh, to diminish because you no longer live in the temporal existence. Do you see what I mean? Mm -hmm. You don't. You no longer live in accordance to the 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 cosmology of the earth. You you have now uh, moved just like Enoch. He was translated in an instant, in an instant of an eye. In a twinkling of an eye, he was in the eternal realm. Mm -hmm. That's how close he was. And so this is why we we get so hung up because it, everything looks so vast. Everything looks so like it, everything looks so like impossible. But God, but God, it, it, these these things are are nothing to him, and his, his fulfillment of all things. Are, is it's all about the eternal, the eternal connecting with the temporal. This is exactly what the occultists know and believe. Those who are in the know, they know that heaven and earth once was one existing place, and this whole uh, connecting the 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 the, st the star. The two triangles are connecting, one's pointing down, one's pointing up. And this connection, this intersection of two triangles is the connection of heaven and earth coming in one unified place. So the, the occult world knows about it and the occult world is wanting to see this take place. But the, but the people of God is foreign to them. It's foreign to them to to even believe that uh, that these things are even true, but we can see that this is what they're after. They're after that eighth day. They're after that eternal realm, that eternal existence, and they want to rule that. And it says, uh, and and that's what they've been working through. All the elites and the and all the higher echelons are working. Uh, with Satan and Lucifer to be able to try to usurp that before Yeshua comes and claims the earth and, and, and claim the people of the earth. This is why we're going to go through difficult times because through technology, they're trying to bring, they're bringing in this these two parallel universes together. So Enoch walked with God, which can also meant that Enoch walked towards God. Enoch did not stay on the earthly plane. Enoch was not bound in the temporal world. His focus was on the heavenly places. His faith ascended him up out of time and space in the pursuit towards God's realm, the eternal. The old saying is, "You are so you are so heavenly minded. You are you are not earthly good." This is exactly the lie of the devil. The devil wants us minding earthly things so heaven will be will be so far from our minds if you draw near to god he will draw near to you the believers must go up or ascend all y'all to jerusalem or the heavenly places moses went up and ascended into the mountain to meet god and moses was in the heavenly realm that connected with mount sinai in the moment of time Hebrews 12, 18 and 23. For ye are not, not come unto the mount that might be touched 
and that burned with fire, nor unto the blackness and darkness and tempest, and the sound of a trumpet and the voice of words, which voice they that heard entreated that the word should not be spoken to them any more, for they could not endure that which was commanded. And if so much as a beast touched the mountain, it shall be stoned or, the, uh, or thrust through with a dart. And so terrible was the sight that Moses said, I exceedingly fear and quake, but ye are come unto Mount Zion, unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. They went up to the heavenly Jerusalem and to the innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and the church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven and to God, the judge of all and to the spirit of just men made perfect. The heavens of the eternal realm came down to be manifested in the physical on Mount Sinai. The commandment of God went forth and the people were terrified. The people rejected the voice coming from the mountain. Moses was separated from the people to mediate for the people. Moses was able to go up up unto Mount Zion, the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, the city of the firstborn. Moses ascended to the eternal realm and descended to the physical realm to get the instructions from God to deliver to, to, deliver to the people. Moses was instructed to sanctify the people on the third day of the third month. Uh, resurrection. The, you know, for being fruitful, new birth. God was preparing the people to cohabit with him as their king over his kingdom of priests. Exodus 19 and 6. After the sin of the golden calf, Moses pleaded with God to go, go with him to possess the promised land. But God declined and sent angels instead. Exodus 32 and 34. And Exodus 20 and 18 and 22, and all the people saw the thundering and the lightning and the noise of the trumpet and the mountains and smoking. And when the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. And they said unto Moses, speak thou with us and we will hear, but let not God speak with us lest we die. And Moses said unto the people, fear not for God has come to prove you. And that for and that his fear may be before your faces, that ye sin not. And the people stood afar off, and Moses drew near unto the thick darkness where God was. See, he wasn't afraid of that thick darkness. And the Lord said unto Moses, Thus thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, Ye have seen that I have talked with you from heaven. Moses was not afraid to draw near to God, even when the conditions were frightening. Moses went into the thick darkness to press through the, to the presence of the Almighty. We believers must go through the realm of the second heaven, where Satan's kingdom resides, before we can ascend into the realm of the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. This is our warfare. We're pressing to that realm. We're pressing in the spirit man, in our hearts. We're letting, we're, we're letting the flesh and the desires of the flesh die off. We're losing this temporal life so we can gain eternal life. And we're pressing to, to, uh, to uh, not get sidetracked by uh, the peripheral. Not, we're not getting sidetracked by the kingdom of darkness that wars against our flesh to try to prevent us to, to ascend. We're ascending in our hearts. We're ascending by faith, not by the occult way. The occult way is doing it through consciousness and through, and through the mind and through the soul. No, we humble our heart so God can lift us up. As we are brought low in, in humbleness, then he is able to lift us up. We humble ourselves, and then he lifts us up. He exalts us. 
We wait on him. We wait on him. And so this is and so he, and he strengthens us along the journey to be able to receive from him and interact with him. This is why the righteousness of God is not by the works of the law. It is by faith because as we are are as we're ascending then righteousness is imputed so we can interact with the holy God. It says that Abraham believed God and righteousness was imputed. And I'm going to read some more scriptures because God is dealing with your inner man so he can elevate you. Mm-hmm. He wants you to be immortal. We're just going to shed off this mortal body, but our inner man is already going to have the fire of the spirit. It's already going to have this connection with God. It's already going to be glowing with the presence of God. It's going to be uh, lit up. This is what this is all about the oils and the lamps, you know, and the virgins and not having enough oil for their lamps. We are burning vessels for God. They're not literal oil lamps. They're the, the vessel inside of you's got to be burning. It's got to be ablaze in your inner man so that the spirit of God can detect you. Mm-hmm. So, and we're just going to shed off immort- this Im- this mortality and put on immortality. Right. And so we've and so that our oils got to be 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 a uh, with a good amount of oil to keep the light of of the glorious gospel, the light of his presence within us, the the near Talmudim light has to be in your ark. And it has to be lit and it can't not go out. Mm -mm. If it goes out, then you are an apostate and God will overlook you. You've got to be burning with the oil of his presence and so this is why we have to get into the spirit this is why we we, if darkness will cover the light no one puts a candle and put it under a bushel no because it will go out it's covered that flesh will cover your light every time your flesh will will take out the light the deeds and the actions of your flesh will take out the light this is why we have to put on Christ and we have to put on the, it in the inner man what he has provided through his blood so that the light will be transcendent, will be, tra- will be translucent through our flesh. Mm-hmm. So that the flesh and the deeds of the flesh don't put it out. See, that is so different. That's why it has the fire of his spirit will purge out the darkness. It will expel the darkness. So the light of the gospel, the light of his presence will be so bright in you that it will, it will, it will be a translucent light that will be detected in the day of his return. The candle will go, the Bible says that the candle will go out in Jerusalem. In, 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 in Babylon, they, they, where the candle will go out in Babylon. Do you remember what it says? Because that's when the, the God's people will be removed. The candle will go out. And remember in the judgment of, of uh, there will be no more candle. Because it will go out. The candle of the Lord. Let's look it up. And it says in Revelations 22, and there shall be no night there and they need no candle, neither light of the sun for the Lord hath given them light and they shall reign forever. And that's the, in Revelations 22, but there is the judgment you go, uh, right here. And it says, and in Revelation 18, and the voice of the harper and the musicians and the pipers and the trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in thee. And no craftsman of whatsoever craft he be shall be found any more in thee. And the sound of the millstone shall be heard no more in thee. And the light of the candle shall shine no more at all in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom 
which is Yeshua, and the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee, for the for thy merchants were the great men of the earth, and for that and by thy sorceries were the nations deceived. So the this uh, Babylon, the uh, there the, this is uh, when God will come and judge uh, and the great city Babylon and overthrow it, because there will be no more candle. No more gospel, no more bridegroom, no, no, uh, no way of being saved. There will be no more deliverance for the people that they will be, it will be cut off because, uh, and this could be the day when the, when we are taken up with him in the cloud and, and when, uh, Babylon is fully destroyed because there will be no more candle, no light shall be no more in thee and the voice of the bridegroom and the bride shall not be heard in thee that then all the the kingdoms of the earth and the and babylon and all this existence have has no more hope because it's the light of the gospel that brings hope to the nations mm -hmm. we are a light to the nations and we bring that hope yep. so and if once that light goes out then there is no hope and then there is no more bridegroom. Now he's coming as a man of war to destroy those who have not received the, the gift of salvation. So we need to keep our lights burning. Yes. So we're ascending in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Jesus sits above in the spirit realm. We are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Satan uh, <laughs> dominates believers by attacking them in the mind, thoughts, feelings, nuances of the soul and in the body second corinthians 10 and 5 casting down imaginations and every high thing exalted itself against the knowledge of god and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of christ we must bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of christ it is the endurance of faith that will push us on an in a uh, push push an individual through the realm of darkness to defeat satan's attacks through the soul and body the kingdom of darkness wants a believer to give up on moving upward in the inner man towards god the cross for the believer is to put to death the world the soul and the appetites of the body the cross of yeshua will bri bridge the temporal life to the eternal life where we will receive resurrection life. The process of conforming to, conforming to the death of Yeshua in order to be resurrected in newness of life must happen before our temporal bodies physically dies. The spiritual parts of men must be uh, maturing, maturated in themselves in the nature of Christ. Colossians 1.13 who has delivered us from the power of darkness and who has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. We are already being translated into that kingdom in the inner man. Mm -hmm. John 3 and 13, it says, And no man hath ascended to heaven, but he that come down from heaven, even the son of man which is in heaven. Adam's lineage cannot go to heaven or to the eternal realm on its own merit. Adam broke away from the eternal realm when he fell into the soul and became, a, and became defiled by the serpent. Yeshua came to bring Adam's lineage back under him by translating believers to the, his kingdom with his life's blood. The blood of Yeshua breaks the power of darkness that holds all men captive in the sa satanic kingdom. Satan can't rule. Sin and death cannot rule in synonymous or next to the king of kings and the lord of lords. Right. One's got to go. I'm sorry to say. One's got to go. We can't have two kings sitting on their thrones. Right. One, uh, one has, uh, has to be kicked off their throne before the other one can reign. This is why we cannot l get our hopes in believing that the uh, millennial reign is for this, uh, the corrupt nations. 
for the, for the nations that have rejected Yeshua as king. We, 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 they have, we have been lied to, to thinking that Yeshua's kingdom is futuristic and not now. And, he, and it's, for the, it's, for the, it's for the healing of the nations still in their sinful nature. No, he is the healing of the nations now. We run to him now. He is, we're being gathered into him now. He is, he is, he is, he, we are in the midst of that great harvest. We, it doesn't matter if you can see it or not. God does not have to reveal all things to every person. It is by his word. We, we uphold his word. We uphold his word. And that, and if we, and when his, his word is being fulfilled. And that's why we can't get hung up on people's par their own paradigm of how eschatology is going to end up. Mm -hmm. We're going to lose sight. Yeah. We're going to lose. We, we have to dig into those words when it says you know, certain things in Isaiah and uh, uh, in, I think it's Zechariah and, and different places about how they, they have transpired this kingdom, this millennial kingdom, that every you know those who don't come up for Sukkot will they will not be rain and will not be rained upon. They have to they have to they have to break down those words. They these words are they indicate a bigger picture, a bigger picture than what we see on the surface. And I did break it down one time, but I don't have it in front of me exactly what these words and these terms and what this actually means. Because we can't go to uh, other sources. We've got to stay with, this is to be our base. The Bible should be our base. It should be, it should be the, the uh, foundation mm -hmm. to what we believe. Everything else is secondary. And it's, and it's questionable. So we can't, and commentary is questionable. Not everything has been revealed. But anyways, in this book, The Last Kingdom, uh, in the, His Kingdom of Peace, let me get to it. Um, it says, This Kingdom of Peace, Genesis 49 and 9, Judah is a lion whelps from the prey and sons that are gone. He stoops down, he crouches as a lion, and as an old lion... Who shall rouse him up? The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor the lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh comes, and until unto him shall the gathering of his people be. Strong's concordance, Shiloh means tranquil, peace. Hebrews 7 and 2, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being by interpretation king of righteousness. And after that, also the king of Salem, which is the king of peace. The king of peace has the authority to reign in Salem, which is Jerusalem, the city of the great king. The rod of authority and revelation, it becomes the rod of iron. Genesis 14 and 8 shows the Melchizedek was a king of righteousness, a king and priest of the Most High. He offered bread and wine to establish a peace offering. Too many Christians are, ne are never taught about the covenant of peace. Numbers 25 and 11 and 12. Phineas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, had turned my wrath away from the children of Israel. While he was zealous for my sake among them, that I consumed not the children of Israel in my jealousy. Wherefore, says, Behold, I give my covenant of peace. He shall have it and his seed after him, even the covet of everlasting priesthood, because he was zealous for his God and made atonement for the children of Israel. Zadok was one, was one who came down through Eleazar line. Zadok means righteousness, priest of righteousness. Melchizedek is king, priest of righteousness. And that everlasting covenant of peace it is in operation as long there is a Zadok or Zedek priestly order. 
Yeshua is the order of the Melchizedek that will continue forever. It has no beginning or end, Hebrews 7. He is the Prince of Peace, according to Isaiah 9 and 6. The kingdom of Yeshua mediates the covenant of peace, Ezekiel 20, uh, 34, 23, and 25. And I will set up one shepherd over them, and he shall feed them, even my servant David. And he shall feed them, and he shall be their shepherd, and I, the Lord, will be their God. And my servant David, a prince among them, I, the Lord, have spoken it, and I will make them a covenant of peace. And will cause the evil beasts, which are demons, to cease out of the land, and they shall dwell safely in the wilderness and sleep in the woods. Isaiah 5, 4, uh, 54, 9, and 10. For this is the waters of Noah unto me, for as I have sworn that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth, so have I sworn that I would not be wroth. With thee, nor rebuke thee, for the mountains shall depart, and the hills be removed. But my kindness shall not depart from thee, neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed, saith the Lord, who hath mercy on thee. Ezekiel 37 and 30, uh, 26. Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them. It shall be an everlasting covenant with them and i will place them and multiply them and set my sanctuary in the midst of them forevermore hebrews 13 and 20 now god of peace that brought again from the dead our lord jesus that great shepherd of the sheep though through the blood of the everlasting covenant which is the covenant of peace the kingdom of god is righteousness peace and joy in the holy spirit also, to be spiritually minded is life and peace. The covenant of Yeshua mediates with the body. Mm -hmm. The bread and the blood is the wine, which symbolizes a new covenant of a peace offering. The peace offering is the covenant of peace, which is the ever, uh, everlasting covenant, mm -hmm. which includes the biblical eternal Sabbath and all believers that are in Messiah. Hebrews 12 and 24, and to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, to the blood of sprinkles that better speaks than that of Abel. Abel's blood is crying for re recompense and vengeance. Yeshua's blood cries for redemption and peace, which turns the wrath of God. It is a peace offering to whoever will come and take of the heavenly gift which includes that covenant of peace. Hebrews 6 and 4, For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and partakers of the Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, and have tasted the good world, the good word, I'm sorry, the bread of God, the word of God, and the powers of the world to come, if they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they have crucified with the blood, to themselves the Son of God afresh, and put him to an open shame. So he offers through his blood and through his body this covenant of everlasting peace. So he, he rules the, the messianic age of peace. Yes. In the spirit realm, that is where peace and tranquility resides. And he offers it up to humanity to come into the, the messianic age of peace, the messianic kingdom of peace, which is administrated by his blood. It's a peace offering. You receive his blood and his body, and he takes the wrath of God off of you. He takes you away from the, de the day of recompense, mm -hmm. and the day of the, of, of the Lord's wrath, the day of vengeance which we are not subject to the day of wrath. So those who are in this covenant of peace. But if we have not come into the covenant of peace, then we are all subject to the day of wrath. 1 Corinthians eleven twenty seven and 29. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink the cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body, bread, and blood, of the Lord, had, uh, but let a man examine himself, 
And so let him eat of the bread and drink of that cup. For he that eat and drinketh unworthily eat and drink damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Romans 5 and 1. Being justified by faith, we have peace with God through the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. The covenant of peace is established through faith. We are not looking for a messi messianic age of peace. It is here for us now. Mm -hmm. We have God's wrath turned from us through Yeshua's sacrifice, which reconciles us to God the Father. You know, we got you, the Father reconciled the whole world through Jesus Christ, but not everybody's going to be wants to come into this kingdom of peace yes so they're going to reject it and mm -hmm. so but he reconciled the whole world through him this covenant of peace mm -hmm. through his blood and body <coughs> the covenant of peace is established through faith so we are looking for this we, we are in in the messianic age of peace if we receive his body and blood so it says 2 Corinthians 5.19, The God is in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing trespasses unto them. We bring damnation to ourselves when we continue to walk after carnal ordinances that have no salvation power. We are to put no confidence in the flesh. It is the work of the Holy Ruach, of the Holy Spirit, applying the word of God and the blood of Yeshua that transforms us Hallelujah, from from uh, from inside out, not outside in. When we eat the unleavened bread, the unadulterated word of God, and the blood is put on the doorpost of our vessel, so that the death angel passes over, we enter into the new covenant of peace through the Holy Spirit. Hebrew explains, Hebrews two seven and nine. Thou made him a little lower than the angels. A little lower than the angels, thou crowned him with glory and honor, and set him over the works of thy hand. Thou hast put all things under his feet, for in that he put all in subjection under under him. He left nothing under him. He left nothing under him. But now we see not yet all things put under him, but we see Jesus, who has made little lower than angels than the uh, than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor that by the grace of God he should taste death for every man so he's been and he has been lifted up above the heavens he's been put in this preeminent rulership over uh, over uh, both heaven and earth over principalities and powers and he's putting all things under his feet right. and one day that that kingdom is going to manifest itself it's going to mess but once it manifests there so there is no more repentance mm -hmm. there is no more salvation extended to the gentiles to the nations and to the world it's just like the rebellious uh, angels that were in eternity and rebelled against god mm -hmm. and they had no salvation they had no way of of being a uh, Going yeah, going back to because they were there in eternity. They were already in eternity. They have already behold his face. They already knew what they were up against. So God gave them no mercy, gave them no grace, they extended no salvation, no second chances. No second chances. That when Yeshua's face is revealed to the world, those who reject him before that revealing or at the revealing or after the revealing, there is no salvation. Right. There is no more salvation. You you have made your choice. Mm -hmm. There is no, like, oops, I'm sorry. I didn't know you were the son of God. No, this is why he gave you time and space to repent now before the revealing of the Son of God. Once he's been revealed and been made known to humankind, there is no salvation extended. No mercy, no grace. The age of grace, mercy and grace is over. It's judgment. Right. It's vengeance. It's recompense. 
So people got to get it out of their mind that there's going to be a Messiah that's going to come back, an earthly Messiah, and he's going to extend his hands to the nations. No, and we're doing it now in the spirit realm. We are doing it now in the, in, 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 as, what are the, this is, uh, the, the good news. Blessed are those who preach the good news mm -hmm. and, and, and offer the gospel of peace. Because that's the only way that you're getting the salvation is through those who are ministering, uh, ministering to the people the good news. And at and it is this is this is the Bible says you know do not uh, you know today is the day of salvation today. Don't turn your foot against you know the, the day of provocation. This is the day of provocation. This is the day of salvation. And it just because the children of Israel rejected their, their, uh, their even Israel, uh, their uh, time when God uh, appeared to them, their time of visitation. And God, because they did not receive Yeshua in the time of their visitation, then God rejected them and extended his hands to the Gentiles. And now both the natural and the uh, wall of uh, olive tree, the wild olive tree, the branches have been broken off. And now we all are grafted in to the cultivated olive tree, which is the kingdom of Israel through Yeshua. And that is the only way of deliverance. That's the only way of salvation. So those who, who think that there's going to be a messianic age that is going to be extended to a world of sin, a world of rebellion. Those who have already rejected Christ. The Bible says, "Will I, when I come back, will I find faith on the earth?" They have already, they have already made war with the Lamb. There is no. They have already made their decisions, and they have made, they have made war in Revelation six. They have already made war with the Lamb of God. There is, there is, uh, there is not going to be. Uh, the this this uh, magnitude of nations. The Bible says that they're going to be as scarce as fine gold. The mankind is going to be as scarce as fine gold mm -hmm. on the earth. There is not going to be much left at his return to cultivate this messianic age and this and this extension to the nations. Because that is not something that is done literally, but it is done now through the Spirit. He rules now in the heavens, and the nations run unto him. Mm -hmm. He is the light to the Gentiles now. Right. And so, and he is offering the the the, the his, he's extended his blood and his body through good tidings, and through ministers, through the preaching of the gospel. Let me look at that scripture and we'll quote it right. And it, he's going to treat you like the like the, the like the rebellious angels. Uh, when he comes back, you had your chance. You seen eternity, and you denied me. And he is not coming back. For a rebellious bunch of people that has rejected him. And extending them mercy and grace. He's not. And it preaches the good news. It's probably good tidings. It's not coming up. The feet of them who brings good tidings. I remember those scriptures.
while I'm looking for them. So. But anyways, let's keep going. It says Hebrews 27, 14, for as much them as the children are partakers of the flesh and blood, he himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to the bondage, for verily he took on him the seed of Abraham, wherefore in all things it behooves him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful high priest, merciful and faithful high priest of the Melchizedek in things pertaining to God, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. Yeshua is the faithful high priest of our profession, but not through sacrifice of carnal ordinances. Instead, we walk by faith and not by sight. He puts his laws in our hearts of flesh so that we want to obey. It is a spiritual covenant with a kingdom, and it cannot be observed with carnal vision or carnal ways. So, it, blessed are those who preach the good news. Because, and what did he say? Those who will receive you, it'd be better for those who reject you. It'd be better for them in the day of provocation because what it says, it, it must be more tolerable in the times of Sodom and uh, Gomorrah than those days who have rejected his extension. It says, it uh, said, but unto you that shall not be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and the day of judgment than for these. And he commanded them that they should take nothing for their journey, save staff only, no script, no bread, no money in their purse. But he shod, uh, shod with sandals and put on two coats. And he said unto them, In what place soever ye enter into the house, there abide till ye depart from that place. And whosoever shall not receive you nor hear you when ye depart then, shake off the dust under your feet for a testimony against thee. Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for, this, for, for Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. And they went out and preached the men that they should repent. So, it, you know, this is exactly, God is sending out people to preach the gospel. They're forsaking uh, this world, and they are going through the things that they have to go through to be able to bring the gospel to, to the lost. And God's not going to take this lightly. Oh. And he, those that he's not going to be like, oh, you, you know, too bad, so sad. You know, you, you know, you just didn't know. No, he expects us to know, to seek him and to find him, seek him with all your heart. It said, he said, go, and he went to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And he said, go preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out the devils. Freely you have received and freely you give. Provide neither gold nor silver nor brass in your purses, no scrip for your journey. Neither two coats, neither shoes, nor your staffs, for the workman is worthy of his meat. And into whatsoever city or town ye shall enter, inquire who is worthy, and there abide till you go thence. And when you come into the house, salute it. And if the house be worthy, let your peace peace come upon it. But if it not worthy, let your peace return, because this is what this is what we are. We come and bring the, this good news of the peace 
the covenant of peace, the eternal peace of God. We may, we are his ambassadors. We are, we're, we're the one that is making this peace offering to the souls of men. We are the conduits. We're the, we're the vessels that Yeshua as uh, and the disciples or the, the ministers that are going out preaching the good news, offering this kingdom of peace to them. For them to receive because he is, he's made a peace offering. And if you receive of this peace offering, then you, and receive of the eternal, uh, of the eternal kingdom, then the wrath of God is, is, you know, is off of you. You know, it protects you from the wrath of come. And it says, but it, but let your peace be returned and whosoever shall not receive you nor hear your words when ye depart out of that house or city shake off the dust of your feet verily i say unto you it shall be more tolerable for the land of sodom and gomorrah in the day of judgment because we are without excuse we're without excuse we should know especially in america because mm -hmm. we have the word of god we have this the word this world the word is not is not legal in some countries and the, and the word of God is very precious in in some of the countries like China and places like that, and they ha have to hide this word, and they'll come and confiscate it. They'll take it from him, so it's precious to them. They hold on even pages of it. They hold on to it because it's their life source, and we have it for at abundance. We have it, and we're without excuse. Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment for than that city. So, so we're to be wise, harmless as does, but we're offering a peace offer, off, offering. We're off because uh, he is. We are within that covenant of peace. And it says in Romans ten, it says, "Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved." For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going out to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves into the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness. This is Romans 10, starting the first verse. To everyone that believeth. So our righteousness is coming is is been extended to us through Christ, through the new covenant, by faith in His blood and and body, and we be joined with Him, and now righteousness is imputed to us. This is how we get into this eternal kingdom, but not by the righteousness that is of the law, but by the righteousness which is of God through Yeshua. It says, "For Christ." is the end of the law at, for righteousness to everyone that believeth. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that man which doth these things shall live by them. But the righteousness is of faith, speaking on the wise, say in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven? That is, who shall bring Christ down from above? Or who shall descend into the deep that to bring Christ again from the dead? But he, what saith he, the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth from within. Because your words are life and spirit, and they're connected to the eternal spirit, which should bring a quickening spirit to your your soul, to your to your to your very being. To be able to change you from the in, from the inside out, it has said, "The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart." That is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thy heart, you shall be saved. Romans one, so much as it 
as in me is I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Romans for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth to the Jew first and also to the Greek for therefore in therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith glory to glory faith to faith as it is as as it is written the just shall live by faith for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in ungodliness because that which may be known of God is manifested in them for God showed it unto them uh, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the worlds are clearly seen being understood by things that are made even his eternal power and Godhead so that they are without excuse. Mm -hmm. So we're all without excuse. Galatians 2, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we believe in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For the, but for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. But if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are founded sinners, is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. For I build again the things which I destroy. I make myself a transgressor. For I through the law... And dead to the law that I might live unto God. So it says, for if I build again the things which I destroyed. So he's destroyed the outward things. He destroyed his upbringing, the things that he, his traditions, the things that he, his culture, the things that were, that identified him as, as a, as a, as a Benjamite, as a Pharisees, a Pharisees, as uh, as uh, as doing the law, he was blameless. Mm -hmm. I mean, but he had to destroy all that, uh, everything that he worked for, everything that he that he uh, identified with, his culture and everything, became like dung to you know it was to because his pursuits became the high calling in Christ Jesus to be, to be able to have the power of his resurrection manifest in him. You know, he, he counted all dumb. He counted his, all that he, that he grew up with. All, all his foreknowledge, he called it dumb. And the righteousness that he obtained by the law, by being blameless in the law, he called it dumb. And he had to let it all go. For the pursuit, for the resurrection power from within. He, he understood that the righteousness of God is not by the works of the law, but it's by faith. And now his pursuit is to die so Christ may live. Mm -hmm. Christ, I must die so Christ may live. That's a concept that a lot of people can't wrap their minds around. Yeah, They can't wrap their minds around. It's difficult because it's not something that we can, that we can just do. Yeah. It's not something that we can put a formula on. It's not something that we can put it, put it in categories and, and, and we can't put it in, in, in a formula, in a ritual, in an ordinance, in a statue. You know, it's not something that we can uh, orderly do, you know, like and law. You die to your flesh is basically the same thing. You, you, will, you know, you, when you die to the flesh, you're letting God, Christ live. Mm-hmm. Christ must be in you first, right? And you must live by faith. But it, it is it's a yielding of your spirit, it's a yielding of your mind and wants and desires, and to be able to know the will of God. You know, sin, sin is all around us. Sin lives in this mortal body. Yes. When we contend with sin all the time, yes. we contend with sin in our emotions. We cont contend with sin in in our pride, in our rejection. Yes. We're always dealing with sin. This is why the nature of sin must be put to death. Because that's what that's what's, has dominion in your life. It could be 
good or evil. It could be a uh, sin that that it's not really hurting anybody else but yourself because you're because now your sin has to do with religion religious pride uh religious uh, uh you know vindication mm -hmm. i see more and more people lashing out in religious vindication than ever yes. before yes me too. People are lashing out in in the in hatred <laughs> one towards another. There is a divide more than ever before between whose side are you going to be on? Mm -hmm. You know, the, the hatred for the organized church is on the uprise. Right. And I, I'm not saying or or even uh, validating their apostasy. Yes, they have fell into apostasy. Yes, they have fallen into error. But the but also to have such hatred for yes for yes hatred for the deception yes hatred for the sin but there but it's extended to the person mm -hmm. it is extended to the organizations is extended into the uh, in so in such a level and such a realm people are not preaching the gospel they're not preaching the word they're not preaching uh, you know, and, and learning of Christ and learning of, of the new covenant, what they're preaching is a preaching against the organized church, preaching against uh, uh, false prophets, and which is okay. We need to know who are, you know, what is false out there. I'm not saying that it's not wrong. They're preaching against the but ones who are not false. They're pre but, there, but there is an, uh, an uprise on discrediting everything yes. discrediting every person uh, people are building up youtube channels on the backs of bringing somebody else down deconstructing their theology mm -hmm. assaulting them in their in their beliefs there is such a uh, there is such a stewing of hatred and there's lines that are being drawn in the sand of people identifying with groups and beliefs and they and they have formed an idolatrous religion around parts of the bible yeah. basically parts of it and want you to conform to them conform to their ideology and conform and if you don't conform to the way they believe they they spew hatred at you yeah they and they do and they and they and they and there's a such a a a, a fear. Uh -huh. There is a fear because there's going to be um, people will rise. The Bible says in the last days that uh, people are going to uh, they're going to there's going to be an uprise. In in, in in nation will rise up against nations, people against people. Be on the basis of their ideologies and belief and culture, mm -hmm. because now everything is out on display. Yeah, they will think that they're doing God's this, favor. Yeah, they will say they'll be bringing you and putting you to death and thinking they're doing God's yeah. service yeah. because there is there the the inward man has not been changed. Mm -hmm. The inward man is not being conditioned and conformed in love. The inward man uh, is out to discredit, disprove you at the expense at the at your expense, so that I can be right. Right. And and that's to me is uh, the Bible says we're not to uh, argue or debate or uh, or dispute over genealogy or over the law. Right. It says that we're not to have arguments. We are to put our faith in Messiah and we're supposed to live by our convictions. I'm not out conforming people to my ideology and my convictions. I have a personal relationship with Yeshua that brings conviction. I like to know the good and the evil. I like to know where things originate. I like to know the background and the backstory of the things that I participate in so I can make a informed decision, but I, but I'm not out destroying other people's life. I'm now not condemning them. I'm not out bringing spewing hatred because they don't think like me. 
or believe like me. People have the right to believe any way they want to believe. Right. They have the right to, to, God has given them enabling rights to believe in what they want to believe about him and about what they, how they want to conduct their lives. Right. It is none of my business. Mm -hmm. All I can do is present truth. If I believe in the whole counsel of God from all the way from Genesis to Revelation, all I can do is give you the scriptures. Right. It's up to you to take the scriptures for yourself and decide for yourself. Mm -hmm. I don't want you to conform to me. I want you, or the Bible says in Acts, they, that, uh, what did it say? It says, that I just read last week. It says, for I know, I start with the 21st, 20th verse. It says, for I know this, that after my departure sh shall grievous wolves enter among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own self shall men arise speaking perverse things to draw away disciples. They're drawing disciples after themselves. Therefore, watch and remember that by the space of three years, I have ceased not to warn everyone you night and day with tears. They People today is exactly what Paul says. Uh, wolves have come in sparing not the flock and, and trying to gather disciples unto their ideology, unto their doctrine. Uh, hate hate, the, hate the, uh, the organized church. Hate, hate the organization. Hate the, the, uh, the, the, those places. Do you see? And hate, and hate the, this group of people. Hate this thing or, or don't have nothing to do with them. But come over here. I have got the truth. I have got the truth. Come and follow the way that I have, it, it has been revealed to me because God is with me. See, you are pulling people away unto yourself, thinking that you know the word. Do you see? And a lot of people don't know the word. They're, they're still young, babes in Christ, babe in the word, thinking they know, what does he say? Thinking they know how to teach the, the word. But uh, and, and being able to preach the, the law to them. Let's see. With this with thinking they know how to present the gospel, knowing how to preach this gospel, knowing how to to warn the people. But actually, they're doing a disservice because they're trying to just deconstruct that that belief so that you will take hold of this belief. Instead of just the Bible says that Paul sees not to warn everyone night and day with tears. Mm -hmm. He he had a heart that wanted them to be led in the truth of the gospel of Christ. The, the, the righteousness, the kingdom of God and to be and follow. He said, follow me as I follow Christ. He didn't gather disciples unto himself. He gathered disciples unto Messiah it, under the, 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 under the new covenant, under what has been provided in, in, for our inheritance, understanding the, the word from all the way from Genesis, all the way from Revelation, understanding all the ins and outs and really being able to explain them. They didn't have the New Testament scriptures, the epistles. They didn't, when when, peop, when uh, Paul spoke of Christ, he, he preached to them in the Tanakh, in the, in the, in the, in the volume of the scroll, in the uh, parchments. The Bible says, and in, and, and, and in the prophets. And he speak of Christ in the Old Testament. And preach them the good news of Messiah in the Old Testament. I mean, in the, in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. But he point them to Messiah. They point them to Christ. He, he understood 
all the ins and outs and the intricate things of the word of God to be able to show them that he was the Messiah. He came to do what he do. He did come to fulfill and he not, and he added to the scriptures, to the, to the, uh, the, can, the canon, the epistles to be, bring everything into his clarity in his perfect revelation. And, and so knowing that we, we don't have to hang on to the outward things that we can come into this unseen realm, the unseen kingdom mm -hmm. that is not working within the righteousness that we do in the flesh, <laughs> but we do the, our righteousness is being purged right. from darkness and coming into his marvelous light. Mm -hmm. We're being, we are being conformed and transformed and being renewed from from darkness into the marvelous light of God. That is, I mean, it's a transformation. It's being transformed to His dear Son. That the kingdom of His dear Son is being is uh, it is uh, it's about the uh, inward man expelling the darkness that resides in it, so that the light of the gospel may shine. So righteousness is imputed. Righteousness is in Christ. Righteousness is understanding this this book that is pertaining to the Messiah and his offices and his his instructions that is pertaining to the life to come and the revelation of that of the life to come and what it how we are to act and interact with the life to come mm -hmm. and so it says but if while we seek to be justified by Christ we ourselves also are found sinners is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. For if I build again the things which I destroy, I make myself a transgressor. For I through the law am dead to the law that I might live unto God. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for it is the righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Philippians 3, yea, doubtless I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, from whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, sufferings being made conformable unto his death, if by any means I might obtain unto the resurrection of the dead. So we are being raised. We want the power of the resurrection. So we must die to this carnal life. We must die to this carnal temporal world so the life of Christ may be you know, formed up inside of us through resurrection power. So we're being made conformable to the death. So the power of the resurrection life may be manifested through us. And what that when the resurrection at the end, that we may be counted worthy to be able to be a part of that first resurrection. Speak, we, that is in Revelation, spoken in Revelations. Now, as though I had already obtained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I might apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but the one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, I'm reaching forth unto the things which are before. I press towards the mark of the for the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus, our Lord. So our righteousness is of Christ. And the Bible says, remove one more scripture. I think it's Romans 2.16. Because everything that is, everything that is going to happen in the end, 
is is going to be about bringing everything into judgment. Mm -hmm. Brent, it's a culmination of all things into Christ. <laughs> We've got to get into Christ so that we're not judged with the world. Right. We're not condemned with the world. This is why we come into Christ. This is why we come into him. It says Romans 2 and 16. It says... It says, uh, let's go uh, for, for as many, we'll start at the 12th, uh, chapter 2, verse 12. For as many as have sinned without the law shall also perish without the law. And as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. Remember I told you that the law of Moses are for sinners. And f and for the whoremongers and the disobedient, those who are outside of Christ, right? Outside of Him, for the uh, manslayers and the murderers and all them, all those, not for the righteous, because our righteousness is not based on the law. Our righteousness is how much of the darkness is removed out of us. Our righteousness is how much righteousness is imputed in your vessel. How much of the light of Christ is being formed up in you. How much of the life of Christ and how much of the light of the eternal spirit is magnifying out of you. That's, that's our righteousness. Mm -hmm. That's how people mark us. Right. That's how, that's how we are. We know that we are his disciples mm -hmm. is by, by our fruits. Mm -hmm. And by the, the manifestation of his presence living inside of us. The Bible said, you know, the Bible says we will know them by their fruits, by what they're producing, what's being produced out of their life. Not by what they say, but what is being produced out of their life. And so it says, for not the hearer of the law are just, before God, but doers of the law shall be justified for when it says sin in the law shall be judged by the law for not the hearers of the law are just before God, but doers of the law shall be justified for when the Gentiles, which had not the law do by nature, the things contained in the law, these having not the law are the law unto themselves which show the works of the law written in their heart, their conscience also bearing witness and their thoughts and means while accusing or else excusing one another. So the law is, is to judge carnal man. It's the standard. It was placed here. It, uh, it was written down in a standard from all the way from the time that it was written down at Mount Sinai all the way into now as a as a as a rule or a standard that God can judge the nations on. Mm -hmm. It has to be written down. Uh, before the Bible says before the law, faith was there was no there was no law. They were a law unto themselves. There was it, they you know uh, Abraham didn't have the law written down. His law, the law that he obeyed was the small voice of, of the spirit. The, he heard God's voice and he obeyed. He Shema, hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God, the Lord thy God is one. He heard and obeyed. And so, so that, and so that was it, because he believed God, it was imputed to him as righteousness. But there was no standard of morality until the law was written down to judge righteously because God is a righteous God. He's a righteous L. It did not, he did not be able to judge them righteously until there was a standard. It was all by their conscious, their conscious witness against them that they were in rebellion of God. Do you see what I'm saying? So that it wasn't imputed to them. This is why they they went through many years without any justice because it wasn't imputed. Righteousness uh, judgment wasn't imputed to them because there was no standard of justice. Their only th way they knew is through their conscience was a witness against them that they were in rebellion 
towards the uh, to a, a righteous God. Mm -hmm. So it was so it, it was until the law came that justice was invoked. Justice it 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 it, it triggers the wrath of God because it, it's now written down. It's not only by your conscience, but now it's been written down, and now you're without excuse. Does that make sense? So now it acts in the wrath of God. It acts in the justice of God. So that man is without excuse. They can't say, well, I didn't know I was in rebellion to you, God, because they, you know, my, my conscience has been seared and I didn't know. A lot of people have crossed those threshing floors of their minds being in the, in the realm of reprobation that their conscience is seared and they have no inclination of what morality is mm -hmm. or they're even in rebellion against almighty God. Do you see what I mean? So God had knowing that this was the progression of humanity had, had to put a standard of holiness, a standard of righteousness. He cannot, uh, actively act in justice towards nations and and men without some kind of standard being written down that they can look upon to see that they are in rebellion against him and because this is like acts as a mirror mm -hmm. to uh, you know it, we behold in a mirror a face the righteousness if we're righteous or we're not righteous this is this is our reflection. the the book The book is our reflection to where we are at in God. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So so it, it it so it enacts the justice and the righteousness of God, the wrath of God, because now we're without excuse because it's been written down. For whom for when the Gentiles which they have not the law do by nature the things that contained in the law. These having not the law are the law unto themselves, which show the works of the law written in their heart, their conscience also bearing witness of their thoughts, the means while accusing or else excusing one another. So our conscience was put there to give us a, some kind of a, a meter to, to the righteousness and standard of God. It's a barometer of knowing where we're at within our uh, defile or in our depra in our depravity in our sin to show us where the the, uh, the our sin and show us our wickedness and show us our nature and show us that we don't measure up to the standard of God's holiness or his righteousness so our our conscience bears witness that we are sinners mm -hmm. and are in rebellion to God. And the, the, not only do our conscience speak of it, but this word tells us it, it's a second witness to our conscience that we are in right rebellion towards a holy God. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, so the, and it says, in the day when God shall judge, so it says, which, which show the works of the law written in their heart, in their their conscience also bear witness that their thoughts and means while while excusing uh, else uh, else excusing one another in the day when God shall judge the secrets of men that, uh, by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. Okay, so in the day when God will, now Christ is the standard. The law was the standard for the world as, as God, enacting God's justice. But those who do not come into Christ will automatically be judged according to the law that was written. But those who come into Christ, those who rejected the free gift, re reject the way of salvation, those who reject the free, the free gift, the, the mercy, the grace that have been extended to pull us out of sin, to pull us out of God's wrath, pull us out of God's justice. And God is now dealing with the people, uh, not in accordance to outward accommodations to the law, so God's not dealing with you on the levels of if you if you kill 
somebody or not kill somebody. Now he's dealing with people. Do you have hate in your heart towards your brother? Do you have lust in your heart? Uh, that is that is motivating you if are you looking at at, uh, at a woman or a man to lust after them you have committed adultery in your heart he's looking at the rebellion in the heart he's looking at the the stubbornness the bible says stubbornness is as as a, as a idolatry and rebellion is the same as witchcraft right so God is dealing with the, the intents and the secrets of the heart because now Jesus Christ is calling you to a standard of holiness that is beyond the physical outward accommodations and compliancy of law. The law dealt with, with your your uh, actions it's active your obedience of how you're going to act mm -hmm. outwardly it didn't deal with your the uh, secrets of your heart you can you can have hate in your heart without acting upon that hatred but now within on this side of the cross god is dealing with okay you you're not acting in your hatred but you have hatred that is darkened your heart. It has not been cleansed by the blood of Yeshua. It has not been reconciled by the blood of Yeshua. It has not been reconciled and cleansed and purged. And you have not applied the, the, uh, the, the elements and the tools and the provision I've given you to get rid of the hatred, to get rid of the the this the intents and the motivations of your heart that are causing you to stumble and is keeping you from the kingdom of God for the eternal kingdom of God the eternal righteousness because we all can act outwardly we can all obey outwardly we can all move actively within the law we can all do and do and do not do but only God judges the heart and the intents and the secrets of the heart. And that's the standard of Jesus. Yeshua provided a way that your inward man can, can be changed. Your, your stony heart can be turned to a heart of flesh. Now, God's, God doesn't care. He does care how you act. But, he, but, he, but he's taken it to a different elevation. He doesn't want you to commit murder. He don't want you to uh, profane holy things. He doesn't want you to, you, he doesn't, do you see? He doesn't want you to lie. He doesn't want you to cheat. He doesn't want you to steal. He doesn't want you to take his name in vain. He doesn't want you to have idols. Do you see what I mean? And we can outwardly kind of put these away, not do, but he's going, he's going, past those things into the the eternal innermost parts of you that are going to live on forever but if you're going to reside with me i, I want i want a deeper commitment i want a a, de a deeper expectation of you i want these laws not only written on your heart to obey but now the now I'm, i want you spiritually sanctified spiritually holy and spiritually ready and prepared for my coming and so that you remove all the darkness that has been created inside of you from <laughs> evil the evil intents of the heart the evil the evil inclinations of the heart the evil uh expressions of the heart this is why people are doing commandments but they but their hearts not been changed this is why you see a a a a a, a hatred being spewed out and you know heart because they have they don't they haven't they have they're they're not they're not empathizing or sympathizing or relating they're just they're just commanding people to obey and conform 
But they, you can conform all you want. Doesn't mean that your heart's been transformed. Doesn't mean that your heart's been softened. It doesn't mean that your heart's been uh, been changed and converted to be able to receive God's love within it. How you can't instruct people to conform outwardly without first being able to be conformed on the inward parts. You've got to experience and be interacted with his, the love of God and, his, and the compassion of God and the empathy and the sensitivity that God has and, and the mercy of God before you can go around telling people what they can and cannot do. In the expression, because all you're putting out is a heart of, of, of evil, because you're you're just wanting people you're just wanting them because your intentions is to remove them from the organized church because you have a, a hidden secret of the heart against the church and the lies of the church and the things that they represent you uh, the deception and 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 you're hating the false teaching and there's there's we can create so many emotions against why we feel and feel vindicated and why we feel the way we feel about certain things and situations. And we act within that because we have fear. We have, we have, we have animosity. We have, we have bitterness. We have resentment. We have the, the, the heart is, 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 is a, a heart of disgust, disdain for them. And it's bleeding through because your heart has not been converted. It doesn't matter how much truth you have. It doesn't no matter how much you are validating in your truth. It doesn't matter. I don't care how much you can prove from Genesis all the way to Revelation, how much truth you have. Without the heart of love, without the heart of, uh, of compassion, without a heart that has been changed inwardly, all you're spewing out is religion. Mm -hmm. And you have a, a religious spirit and you're going to act violently when it comes in those days when people are making the distinct lines and when people people rise up against people, nation up against nations, you're going to be in line to join in the alliance against the other. It's a warfare within the flesh. And if we don't step away and get converted in our heart and learn to how to work and operate in the fruits of the spirit and be able to be conformed and be able to get a hold of God's heart, then what we say has no validation, has no, has no, uh, it will not reach. It will not touch the hearts of the people. It will have, it will not go and do what it needs to be, it needs to be done. Do you, it, it will have no, no clarity or, or valid, uh, it just won't have any purpose to what you're trying to do. It's just creating division and pain and hurt. And people are just make, uh, drawing lines in the sand and they, people are forming groups and they're clumping in groups and they're not and they're not they're they're dividing themselves and making disciples unto themselves they're not pointing them to yeshua they're not pointing them to the way of salvation they're not pointing people they're pointing them to everything but yeshua as their as the hope of their salvation but the standard is yeshua the standard of our righteousness and the intents of our hearts and the attitude of our hearts and how we uh, preach this gospel and how we portray this gospel is going to be judged in accordance to his standard. The st and he is the standard, not, not the law. He is the standard because he's calling us to a higher standard of righteousness, a higher standard of, of walking out faithful obedience that not only deals with the action, but it also deals with the motivation. And that we are conformed to the image of him and we're walking out through the spirit and not in the conformity of religions or other 
men's expectations. And, and this is why Jesus will be the one that will judge. The, the Bible says that every idle word will be judged. Everything will be judged. And it's going to be in accordance to the standard of Yeshua. Especially for those who have professed Yeshua. We are going to be judged more severely if we have if we have profaned the name of God, if have we profaned the gospel in any way, mm -hmm. God is going to hold us a higher accountability of profaning and misrepresenting His name, and and not handling this word with care, and His people with care. And so he is the standard. He will judge uh, the secrets of men's heart. Behold, thou art called a Jew and re uh, retest in the law and makes they, thy boast of God. So the law, only doing it outwardly, only, you know, builds up this pride within man. Just build, it puffs you up. It builds, you know, builds a, a, a resistance uh, and a separation against those who are not like you it mm -hmm. it divides you into a different class and within your pride and within your arrogance and within that religious spirit you will act in accordance to what you believe mm -hmm. and you and you're going to feel you're going to be affirmed in that in your own mind mm -hmm. and that's why we can't get so puffed up in knowledge and not so puffed up in 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 religion that we lose sight of the mercy and grace of God and the love of God that is that is trying to win people to to him to show him and and Satan works on trying to discredit us but the ultimate goal is to always be without reproach and always be able to handle this word with righteously and handle every person righteously like we would want them to treat us and not allow defense and offenses to get in the way of really seeing the bigger picture and the bigger picture is the worn the righteous and warn the wicked. Mm -hmm. Know your word. Know it. Know it from top to you know, front to back. And handle it righteously with the Spirit of God that is motivating you, that is leading you, and that is giving you the 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 same kind of mercy, the same kind of grace, the same kind of love that He has for the people. And be able to be plugged in to the fruits of the spirit, that your that your works will be magnified in the earth, just like Paul's was magnified in the earth. Paul's life was magnified and extended through time because he sowed on the eighth day. He sowed his life, and now he became a fruitful vessel unto God, even to this day. And we'll get into that next time. But on that, I think I'm going to end. Well, let me finish. It says, And knowest this will, and approvest the things that are more excellent, being instructed out of the law, and are, are confident that thou thyself art a guide of the blind, a light of them which are in darkness, and, and, and instructors of the foolish, a teacher of babes, which has the form of knowledge, and the truth in the law, that thou therefore which teachest another, teachest thou not thyself, thou that preachest a man shouldst not steal, doth thou steal. Thou that sayest a man should not commit adultery, doth thou commit adultery. Thou that abhorrest idols, doth thou commit, uh, commit it. Thou shalt, thou makest thou boast of the law through breaking the law, Dishonoreth thou God, for the name of God is blaspheming among the Gentiles through you, as it is written. For the circumcision verily profiteth if ye, thou keep the law. 
But if thou be a breaker of the law, thy circumcisions made uncircumcision. Therefore, if the uncircumcision keeps the righteousness of the law, shall not the uncircumcision be counted for circumcision? And shall not the uncircumcision, which is by nature, if it fulfills the law, judge thee who by the letter and the circumcision doth transgress the law? For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision, which is outwardly in the flesh. But he is a Jew, which is in one inwardly, and the circumcision that of the heart, in the spirit and not in the letter whose praise is not of men but of god so we got to be mindful that everything that god is doing is inward the circumcision is now is of the heart not of the flesh our actions got to line up with our heart and our heart has to be completely totally purified so that our the secrets of our hearts when they're exposed <coughs> will will be a praise unto God and not be a detriment to our soul. We've got to be in perfect alignment. Mm -hmm. Our hearts and our actions have got to be in perfect alignment to be able to uphold the standard which Christ has provided for us. And then she was saying, amen. <laughs>